I'd like to call the meeting of the district at Chapman to order. This meeting 4, is being recorded. 431. I'd like the opening statement read, please. As we gather today on the traditional territory of the Treaty 8 First Nations to conduct the business of the District of Chetland, we do so knowing that we are privileged to serve the citizens of this community and we shall endeavor to conduct our business in their best interests. Thank you. Thank you. Prior, prior to adoption of the agenda, is there any new business? Not hearing any, adoption of the agenda. Second. Any discussion, all those in favor? Terry? Minutes of the regular council meeting held July 4th, 2022. Any omissions, errors? All those in favor? Carried. Delegations. Heather, TC Energy. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for having me today. I'm very happy to be here, of course, in person, here on the traditional territory of the Treaty 8 communities and neighboring partners. I will share that I am, I'm not here alone. I do have uh, several team members joining me. I don't, here in spirit, of course, on the phone line as well. Uh, we have our project manager, Devin James, uh, our environmental lead, Natalie Woodhouse, and of course, our socioeconomic support, Sarah Chong. So really over the last couple of years, uh, we've been re working really closely with your community um, as TC Energy has been progressing construction on the Coastal Gasoline Pipeline project. While that is our more notable investment here in BC, it's one of our several assets that we have in the Peace region, including totaling our 90,000 kilometers of natural gas pipelines um, really in North America. So when I mention other notable projects, I think about North Montney Mainline, Tower Birch, and of course our Ground Birch Mainline. So today we are here to chat about our anticipated plans to expand our capacity on the Ground Birch Mainline. So we're going to review the construction scope, anticipated timelines, some local considerations, and then of course address any questions that your team may have for us today. So if you have any questions along the way, please uh, don't hesitate to, of course, fire away. If not, we've got to, uh, we can happily address some uh, questions at the end as well. All right, so in the interest of time, I won't spend too much time on this slide here. Uh, but it does cover just some high-level topics that we will be reviewing today uh, during the presentation. Can we get rid of that box that's on the presentation? Lenora, can you have a look at our screen in the chambers? We just need to um, say got it for having the meeting recorded so we can get that box off of the, what we're seeing here. I can keep yakking if that's okay too. Perfect. Yes, so, yes, yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, so this is a slide that, um, or a variation of a slide that uh, some of you have seen before. But for those that are not as familiar with TC Energy, we are a Calgary-based company and one of North America's largest natural gas pipeline networks. And as I mentioned, with over 90,000 kilometers of natural gas pipelines. So we do continue to advance investments that support global efforts in reducing greenhouse gas emissions, expanding renewables, and of course supporting research. So that we do believe that we have a critical role to play in delivering responsibly produced energy. All right, so the scope of the project here. So showcased on our two slides here uh, would be the main corridor drawing. Um, I'll hang on this slide a little bit just as I understand that we do have that pop up. Um, but I did want to mention that this, the full scope includes uh, two pipeline sections that we're referring to both the Saturn and the Sunrise areas. And they're both approximately 23 kilometers in length and will have 42 inch pipe. Supporting TC Energy's construction for these two pipeline sections would be Sereris Murphy Joint Venture. So again, that's a notable uh, pipeline construction company in the area. 
many of you in this community are familiar with them um, and their support on coastal gasoline. So I, I will review each section and now in a little bit further detail. But as you can see at high level, uh, we're looking at starting this uh, just west of Dawson Creek and then it'll head northwest of Ground Birch. All right, so starting in September this fall, we are going to be starting construction on what we call the Sunrise section. So if you look, take a look at the map on the screen here, uh, you'll see the current Ground Birch main line as highlighted in that solid blue color. That dotted line that's going sort of from left to right or horizontally across the screen, that's the anticipated uh, new location or where we're gonna be putting in the Sunrise section, the expansion part. I also would like to highlight that the dotted lines uh, that are on the far left side of the screen and heading sort of more south or to the bottom, that's Coastal Gas Link, just for reference there. Uh, so that's just to give you an idea. Yes? Heather, uh, I see the disturbance. If you, uh, why aren't you going through that, that same corridor? That's a really great question. And you can see here um, that we have had to uh, shift our right-of-way line up here. So it's about two kilometers heading along that parallel. And I'm just curious, I'm wondering if I've got Devin on the line there. Um, Devin, our project manager, is there any insight you can provide into uh, the rationale uh, for uh, this footprint for the expansion on Sunrise section? Yeah, so can, can everyone hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so my understanding is that due to the HCD, so there's only a certain amount of um, locations where we could cross the river feasibly by uh, HCD. So we kind of start there and then move outward from there. So with that little um, box there showing the distance from where the HCD is to where the existing line is, I'm not sure what it says, I think it's 3.6 kilometers. So to move from that point back to where the existing line is, it would, um, when we did the route, it was likely not um, feasible. That makes sense. Oh, feasible. Yeah, so looking at using that existing right-of-way area, particularly around the HDD area, just the integrity and the feasibility of just where we're doing the activity, we do have to shift upwards. We, do, we did check in with our friends at the Kaskatna Watershed Group as well uh, to make sure that our construction activity wasn't impacting some of their areas of concern. And we did receive the green light or thumbs up from that group as well with the city of Dawson Creek uh, that we are outside of their area of interest. So I'm just curious, we, um, we did briefly chat about the water crossing, so I can happily share some follow-up information with the group as well, in case we see value there. Um, did want to share that that's one major scope of the Sunrise section, uh, so we will be um, performing the HDD crossing on the Kiskatna. This is a method that we've used at the Sekunka River and the Murray River crossing on Coastal Gas Link. So the great thing about this method is that we're, we're able to maintain the integrity of the water flow. So if you can picture yourself a little bit of a kayaker going up and down the river and there's pipeline construction taking place on either side of you, you wouldn't notice. So we're still able to maintain the integrity of the waterway, which is great. Um, I did want to mention that we will uh, be starting the HDD work starting in November, or if that's what we're anticipating based on weather. And then of course, uh, wrapping that up, anticipating that at the end of February or possibly March of 2023. I did also want to note uh, that uh, we do have a road crossing, so we do cross the Braden Road, and this work is supposed to, we're anticipating this to take place at the end of 2022. We recognize that this is an artery, a corridor that is key to the Peace region, um, so by no means do we want to interrupt the, tra the traffic flow by any means, so we are able to use construction methods that will enable um, the traffic to remain at least one lane of traffic during our high end, our high construction activity. Uh, so we aren't going to be disrupting the full traffic for the Braden Road. And again, we will be notifying communities and local governments such as yourselves um, well ahead of this time. And we've got our traffic management plans in place where we will have signage 
um, well in advance. Yeah, Heather, uh, that's one uh, point there because we do have people that do fly out of Fort St. John mm -hmm. and it's critical that we be able to get there in a certain amount of time. Some people will fly early, so that is uh, one of the vital points that we get to travel with. We have to take another half hour to get, go through Dawson or go through the other route. Mm -hmm. then, then we're kind of in a little bit of a, either have to do a bit of planning to get to the airport or any medical uh, uh, service that we uh, go for in Fort St. John. Those are very good points, and in particular for the planning, I mean, well, medical basis, of course, overall, we want to make sure that we're not impacting any of the services for medical, whether that be ambulance or, of course, medical doctors visits as well. And holy moly, we know flying, um, especially right now, the a bit of a conundrum, so any additional time we want to make sure that communities are aware of. So note of that and we'll make sure to work with SMGB on that. So we are looking for uh, signage and stuff like that either through the Chamber of Commerce or through the district and then either some kind of board because when you're going and if you don't know you see the board and saying that uh, construction may be delayed 10, 15 minutes whatever whatever the case may, may be so maybe that's some of the stuff that maybe you could contact mm -hmm. Uh, staff here and see what we can do or both together district and uh, uh, TC Energy. Great. No, I'll take that back um, to our team. Devin, I've made a note about that here for signage and I uh, will work with the district just to make sure because again clarity especially in the community and we touch on a few things as well you know school buses and whatnot want to make sure we are covered there. So any other further questions before I move on from the sunrise section and we chat about the second spread? All right, we're moseying along here. All right, so the second spread here, uh, we're referring to it as the Saturn section and we're going to we anticipate starting construction in early 2023. So once Sirius Murphy wraps up the sunrise section, they will essentially continue to mobilize uh, their workforce to be able to progress construction to start on the Saturn section. Um, so if you see here on the screen, there's the blue colored line. That is the um, expansion route that's planned. And the current line, the current ground bridge main line is in black. So you will notice that this section in particular does parallel most of the existing right of way. So you'll notice that difference between the sunrise portion versus this uh, Saturn area. So this spread does tie into the sunrise section and it does head northwest towards uh, TC Energy Saturn number two receipt meter station. So you'll see as it heads up the map there northwest, um, we're actually heading into the tail end of the North Montney main line. So just for some additional reference and context. Yes. So on the map where you said it's a blue line. Yes. Yes, so that's oh, okay. part of it there. Um, so that's 23 kilometers of new pipeline that we're going to be putting in. Um, so as mentioned, it does parallel most of the existing right of way, which is great. Some areas that we do have to deviate from slightly. Uh, but you will notice that our, our major, I'm going to say, area or impact within the community is we do cross that Stewart Lake Trail Road. So heavy, heavy for all recreational users in the Peace Region. Uh, we chatted with the project team and Sir Murphy Joint Venture. Uh, we're able to perform all of our pipeline construction work using trenchless methods, so we are able to maintain that flow of traffic. So similarly to what we're gonna be doing on the Braden Road, we're not gonna stop the snowmobilers from getting into their areas and the boaters and the hunters. We wanna work together. So. That's a key area and we're making sure that we're working with SMJV on that and maintaining that traffic continuity. And again, we'll have signage um, as part of our traffic management planning. So this activity, again, isn't anticipated to start until 2023 and we will share continued updates and um, with the related to the project um, with local government members such as yourselves. Any other questions on this Saturn portion?
All right, heading over to the next slide here. So Sorreras Murphy is anticipating that they'll need about 400 workers to complete these two spreads. That doesn't mean that they'll need 800. They'll use that same 400 starting with, sat with the sunrise and then they'll migrate those folks over to the Saturn section. Um, so the majority of the workforce will be leveraging local accommodations in Dawson Creek. Um, feasibility for this just based on the location of the contractor yard and some of the other office setups. We understand that Sereris Murphy may be pulling some of its workforce um, as some of Coastal GasLink's construction winds down in um, section one as we head into reclamation there. We will see some of their workforce shift over to this project. What that does mean is that we will need them to relocate um, where possible from the district of Chetwind over to the city of Dawson Creek into accommodations there. And again, safety concerns, just being proximity to where the construction tra trailer setup is. However, that doesn't mean that the workforce is going away in the district of Chetwind. We still have almost a full year and a half of construction on Coastal Gas Link. And section two, we're still putting pipe in the ground. So we still have folks um, set up in uh, our Sekunka Lodge and Mount Merrick Lodge on Coastal Gas Link that will continue to use uh, the services from uh, the district of Chetwind. Sarah's Murphy will still have its uh, Coastal Gas Link um, offices set up within the area as well. So we will see a slight shift and decrease in the numbers, at least in the local area, but that should free up some of the rentals and any of those concerns that maybe we would have seen um, mitigating a possible tight rental location. Heather, uh, one question about uh, the contractors that do uh, uh, reside near Chapman or in Chapman. Uh, I know we have uh, other communities supply Coastal Gas Link with uh, contractors, Port St. John, Dawson Creek, Hudson Oak, wherever. Uh, our contractors here in Chapman uh, need to be able to, I guess, apply and be put to work at the same level as uh, our community gave to uh, Coastal Gas Link mm -hmm. the opportunity to uh, give others from outside our community. So that's the stuff that uh, myself and I believe uh, Council uh, needs to say yes, Coastal Gas Link and TC Energy being same, <laughs> in same uh, numbers or same uh, area of contract that uh, doing business, we need to be able to understand that, you know, if we give, we need to be able to uh, uh, take that to, so that we have contractors are in uh, good standings with TC yes. Energy, not just coastal, but with TC Energy. Those are really good comments. Um, I'm sorry, jumping over here slightly to Coastal Gas Link. So um, something that we are working with the local contractors on, and particularly uh, those that we've got registered on the Coastal Gas Link vendor registry system, we're looking at transitioning them over to TC Energy's larger supplier system. So that they're not just now, they're not only just registered for work on Coastal Gas Link and the scopes related to that project, but we're now opening them up into the world of TC Energy. So that will give them opportunities not only for operational roles on Coastal Gas Link, but open them up to um, contracting opportunities such as um, work on the Ground Bridge Main Line here with Sereris Murphy. So. so they won't get lost in the transition of now we're going bigger with TC Energy and we're uh, Coastal Gas Link getting them put on that list are, you know, it could be and uh, hopefully it won't happen that way that they don't get lost in the shuffle from Coastal Gas Link to TC Energy. Mm -hmm. So that's just a concern of mine. No, I appreciate that concern because it is a large list of vendors that we have um, be able to provide opportunities for. So we are working closely with the chambers and if there's an opportunity perhaps for me to follow up directly for some just to be able to share a little bit more outside of this discussion about what we're doing on Coastal Gas Link to help um, with that translation or bringing uh, the businesses over would be more than happy to share what we're doing with that. Um, okay, I'm just thinking here, 
We are also hosting some community engagement events and actually the timing of them, they are taking place this week. We've got one in um, the community of Dawson Creek tomorrow evening and then we have one in Ground Birch on Wednesday evening as well. Uh, the next slide here, I won't spend too much time on this one, uh, but it does showcase that, um, you know, we didn't just dream up of this project over the weekend. Uh, TC Energy has been working behind the scenes with its commercial team to identify this need and opportunity um, on its natural gas system. So we've actually been engaging on this project as early as 2019. And for those of you that were familiar with my predecessor, uh, Miss O'Neill, she would have been chatting with you about the Sunrise section as well. So what I wanna highlight on this slide here is that we are in 2022 and heavy into the engagement front. So we've been doing uh, local government presentations like this one, and uh, we'll be visiting the communities as well and providing those opportunities uh, to connect local job seekers uh, with Sereris Murphy and as well as local businesses. So I recognize I've probably gone over the 10 minutes uh, that we've been allocated here. But I did want to touch on these three components um, that we see on the screen here. These are all three considerations that we take into consideration when um, you know, doing our pipeline construction activity. We've been in the Peace region for well over 10 years now, so we're familiar with some of the nuances that come with traffic management and understanding where some of the no-go zones are with um, the roads. You know, We make sure we stay off of them the 265 road with McLeod School and working very closely with School District 59 and ensuring that we're not um, impacting uh, the school bus services. Uh, working very closely with the regional district as well and local governments, the dust. Driving here, driving in and around town, we understand that, I mean, we're, we were blessed with a bit of a wet sort of early summer I would say but now we're starting to see some of the dust pick up and we understand that that's a challenge especially in the more rural areas uh, so we work with our prime contractor to mitigate some of those items as well and then of course traffic management um, it's great that we've got Sir Eris Murphy uh, back working with us on this project again um, we've got those established as be established best practices uh, with behavior and sort of you know we're here neighbors as guests in the area and we want to make sure that we are welcome back uh, so we continue to work with them and identify opportunities um, you know, to further engage with the community as well. So this uh, sort of last concluding slide here, uh, once we get uh, these two sections into operation, it will uh, become a part of TC Energy's uh, larger management program and it will be monitored 24 seven around the clock by TC Energy uh, personnel. We will be working with uh, local first responders and various members of your group um, once we learn more a little bit about the first responder and emergency response planning. And that's something that we work uh, closely with communities on uh, for life after construction. So that being said, I've gone well over the 10 minutes, uh, but I wanted to cap it off here. This uh, screen here does showcase um, information about the upcoming community events. And I did now want to take the time to welcome any further questions from the group. Okay, thank you, uh, Heather, for all of that. And uh, I'm going to invite you and Kyle to uh, uh, send uh, Carol a letter. I've got an invite for you and him here to discuss uh, a future meeting on housing. So just put it out there. So anyway, I will uh, I will send the information or Carol will send the information. Okay. Sounds yeah. fabulous. Thank you for that. Thank you. And thank you to my team for the support. Have Devin. a wonderful rest Devin. of the day. <laughs> yes. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Bylaws, we've got uh, bylaw plan number 1141 under uh, reports to action. We will continue. Mayor was on holidays, has no report. Nah, Port McMurray was great. <laughs> that's, that's why I went for holidays. So anyway, he was, uh, had good weather. 
and I checked out the oil sands. Northern Alberta is booming again. Okay, uh, any reports? I, I have a quick one. I just have a, just a reminder, August the 20th is the community community. You're going to hear it every meeting. Community community bike rally and the Pine Valley seniors are doing a fundraiser. Um, I'm hoping the fire department, the RCMP will be there or MLA or MP. I'm hoping that mayor and council will make an appearance and just make a donation to them and say hi and have a hamburger. Thank you. Any other reports? We're good. Clay, go ahead. Uh, Chetwin Harm Reduction had a uh, Zoom call, um, conference call. Uh, not too much new. It wasn't very well attended. RCMP wasn't there. Um, Tansy wasn't there, but it's July, it's summer. But everything's functioning well. Um, probably the only uh, bit of news is I think that the transition home might be a little bit too comfortable. Uh, so they put in new regulations that this, this isn't your new home, this is a transition home. So they are, um, uh, yeah, so that, I mean, that's good. It's very comfortable. People want to stay, but maybe a little bit too long. So um, it, it's functioning well. Yeah, no, it, it, it's functioning well and uh, it's, it's having a really positive effect. Yep, thank you, Clay. That's good news. All right, carrying on to. Discussion items. Letter from letter from the district hospital foundation. Can I make a motion to receive Your Worship, could we have a motion to accept um, councilors' reports for info as well? Okay. I'll make that motion to receive reports. I would second that. All those in favor? I'll second that. Okay. Do we get to discuss it? Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> Rochelle won't. I'll think of it. Anyway, go ahead, Clay. Yeah, uh, further to receive this for information, I, I'd like to uh, authorize a sponsorship. I'd like to, I think the district should be a, a gold sponsor on this. It's, um, you know, we support our, our medical communities and, and uh, have the option to have an ultrasound appointment done in town rather than having to go to Fort St. John or Dawson Creek. I, I think it's something I normally I don't want to spend the taxpayers' money sponsoring too much, but this I can definitely support. There was a motion. Well, we have a motion um, right now. Yeah, yeah. Any more discussion? And I think I have to agree with Clay. I, I, I think making a donation, I mean, we made a donation to a hockey tournament. Um, this piece of equipment in our hospital is a much needed and it's for the whole community. So I don't think our community would mind sponsoring this. Um, I guess my only concern is be who's going to run it. Like are the doctors trained to run it? <laughs> like, but yeah, I think, it's, um, I think it's a great piece of equipment and I have no problem sponsoring it. Um, I, don't, um, I don't know who's going to run it, but I don't think it's the ultrasound um, equipment that we think they're, that we're getting in Dawson Creek and Fort St. John, it, it won't be that. So it's just, it's something smaller that they can use here so they don't have to send somebody to Dawson Creek or Fort St. John. Councilor? Well, I mean, just for, for 
clarification, it wouldn't be instead of, it would be used in, in an emergency situation um, where it, it would just, it would be absolutely helpful. I think it's more portable um, than a stationary machine that would be worth, you know, a quarter of a million dollars. I think this one's more $70,000 uh, and will absolutely be an asset. Any more discussion on uh, receiving for information? Okay. All those in favor of receiving for information? All those opposed? Fails. Okay, motion. I'll make a motion that council authorize a sponsorship or donation of the gold sponsor for two thousand dollars. Discussion. Hearing no discussion. All in favor? Those opposed? Noted. Discussion item number, this is a real problem. <laughs> Did you read it now? <laughs> okay, it's from a uh, letter from uh, DGS Astro Paving received June 23rd, 2022, 16th annual DGS Astro Paving Invitational Charity Golf Tournament. Motion to receive for information. I'll second that. Discussion? Yep, go ahead. Uh, I noticed that we all got invitations mm -hmm. to this, and I think, it, I think it'd be a great thing to go to. I'm not exactly sure what we would be authorizing for the marriage of the boat. Like, I don't know, does that mean pay for it for you all? What does that, what does that mean? Because it's all free. Yeah, I, think just, I think it just depends. But I mean, anybody, yeah. anybody yeah, can but attend it. That, that's that's invited, right? Yeah. Anytime we play golf, it's fun. Yeah, I think this would be a fun event. And if we could get six people to go on any team, I think it'd be a great thing to do. Yeah. But the question was, what is uh, what is the district paying them? That's the question, right? If you want to golf, go and golf. But I don't think we should be paying for your transportation or golf, right? I agree. So the motion on the floor is to receive it for information. So if council wanted to do something else, then someone could make a motion. No. So we've got a motion on the, on the floor to see for information. Do we uh, vote in favor of that or defeat it or? Yeah. If, if council would like to vote on that and then if anyone else would like to make another motion, that would be. Okay. All those in favor of receiving for Excuse me. Uh, is further discussion. So, uh, I, I guess if if you're not authorized, and that we just receive it for information, and you're not authorized to attend, you can still attend if you like. Yes. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. If you could just call the question, then we can know whether it was carried or defeated. Yeah. All those in favor? Okay. Correspondence? Motion to receive I-1 through 7. Thank you. Information items. Uh, we got a motion to receive one two seven. 
Sir. Discussion? All those in favor? Carried. Reports for action. Official community plan number 1140-2022. Chapman OCP mapping. And Discussion? Go ahead. I just had a quick question. In our official community plan, is this is where is this where um, we would ask businesses to make their um, store stores uh, a wheelchair accessible? So the district can't ask stores who are in existing buildings um, to improve up to the existing um, building code because they were, they were there before these standards were. But accessibility is really highlighted throughout this document. It's, on, it's in multiple places as council's objective. So it's definitely um, on the, deeply ingrained in that document. If they did renovations, yeah, okay. like for instance, um, the Tansy shelter, um, now that it's a shelter, they had to upgrade to the existing building code. Thank you. Councilor There was, um, and I'm sorry, I must have brought the wrong book because there was something in here um, that I, I can't find right now because I was, oh, I was gonna ask you a question about. Yeah, I think you were gonna ask me what changed why it had oh, thank made. you. Yes, in, in the very front, the very first page, it said that there was some amendments done, and I was just yeah. curious of what the amendments were. Yeah, so we had to do, oh, sorry, can I? Yeah. Okay, we had to do a, a mapping change because a property owner had taken, had applied to the Agricultural Land Commission to have a piece of property excluded from the Agricultural Land Reserve, and then they, in turn, um, put another piece of property that they had into the land reserve and we didn't reflect that in our zoning that happened in about 2012 so we just made a correction to reflect what had already happened awesome. any other questions all those in favor okay. Already to North Central Local Government Association Conference logo. I would make that motion that council endorse the logo included with this report uh, for the 2023 NCLGA conference. Second. Discussion. I have I have a question. Do they not have a logo already? Um, NCLGA does, but the hosting committee or community they always have a different every every year it's a different theme and a different motto oh okay i did not realize that i thought that you guys had to use the same oh perfect any more discussion all those in favor okay Uh, reports for information building permit values. I'll make the recommendation that the report be received for information. I have a motion. Second. Discussion? Just some clarification, please, on May's institutional permit. 
the library. Of course. And then excluding that, how does this compare with previous years? Um, I don't, I can't really remember, but I could definitely get that information for you. Thank you. Okay. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Carried. No new, bi no. no new business. Public questions. Is anybody on? Not hearing any. Porter, good. Okay. No questions? All right. Jeremy. <clears throat>